I'm gathered here with uh, my Vicar General, Father Ben Flores, and, and Chancellor Pat Fierro, of course, I'm Bishop Mark Seitz, and just, we thought we'd come together and share a couple of Christmas memories with you, and, but why don't we begin at the beginning here with this story of Jesus' birth. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. When we hear that passage, I think all of us say, oh yeah, I mean... I can, it takes me back to my childhood in a certain way. The, the various times that I've heard that passage when my family gathered to open gifts or, or at church when we, when we went to Mass. Uh, so I just thought we might, in, in light of that, just talk about some of our favorite Christmas memories uh, among ourselves and, uh, and share them. Um, Father Ben, what comes to your mind when you think about a, a special Christmas memory? Two things come to mind. Uh, my mother's uh, nickname is Belen, uh -huh. uh, even though her name is Crescencia, and, um, but, but it fits with, with her role for us as a nurturer, the one who feeds us, uh, provided for all nine children. And, yeah. Nine of, you. Uh, nine of us, yeah. yeah. Always busy in the kitchen, always something to do in the house. And um, it, it was always around the nativity, I think Christmas for us. Uh, maybe we didn't have a big tree or the same tree year after year after year, but the nativity seemed to be the one focus for all of us where we would be nourished spiritually. We pray the rosary daily. And uh, then we would have some sort of treat of, you know, puñuelos or tamales or something. And um, it's, it's a very fond memory I have of my childhood at home, being nurtured. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Wonderful. Wonderful. What about you, Pat? Well, one of my favorite memories is, involves my son. Um, I love to bake. And on this particular uh, Christmas Eve night, my son says, Mama, tú haces pasteles para mucha gente. Pero no has hecho uno para el niño Dios. Uh -huh. You never made and, any for Jesus? No, and I'm like, ¿Qué, qué, qué, ¿qué me quieres decir? Dice, pues sí, mañana es su cumpleaños. ¿Por qué uh -huh. no le hacemos un pastel para cantarle? And I thought, wow, my son is teaching me something now. It's like I had never thought, you know, I bake the traditional, you know, buñuelos y unas galletitas, pero nunca un pastel. Uh -huh. Y desde entonces estamos haciendo un pastel y le cantamos al niño Dios. Um, y eso es algo que como mamá me, me hizo algo um, muy orgullosa de que mi hijo se acordara de algo así. Okay. I think there's a saying that by our children we shall be taught, right? Exactly. And in a certain way, they help us when we look through their eyes to really understand what the meaning of Christmas is. They see it fresh, not, not like an old person who's just been <laughs> through it before and seen it all, you know. I think I'd like to share one that is just very dear to me from my first year as a priest. Uh, I'd been ordained in uh, May of 1980, and then I was assigned to a parish in a suburb outside of Dallas called Garland, and uh, I was really looking forward to celebrating my first Christmas as a priest, and then I was going to hit the road and drive the thousand miles to Wisconsin to be with my family. So 
really looking forward to that too, you know. Uh, I sang, I'll be home for Christmas the whole way. But, but, but that night, I had the privilege of celebrating Midnight Mass. I don't know why the pastor let me do that, but, you know, uh, he gave that opportunity to me. And uh, uh, it was just such a joy as a priest to be there with the community in the parish and, and saying, okay, all those years of preparation, and now here we are, and, and I'm celebrating uh, the birth of Jesus by, in a certain way, making him present there in, in the midst of that community. Uh, it was such a fulfillment to everything I'd looked forward to. And then as if God just blessed that whole experience, we came out of church, and guess what? It was snowing huge big flakes of snow and you can say it was just a coincidence but for me it was God saying the whole world is a better place because of this night. Well we're certainly praying and wishing that all of you would have a, a good Christmas, a, a blessed Christmas, one that really helps you renew your relationship with the one who was born on that night. Uh, pray that you will be with family, and if you're not, that you're close to Jesus and through Him, close to everyone else that has been part of your life. And we'd like to offer you our best wishes. Yes, you all have a very blessed Merry Christmas and a, also a prosperous New Year. And uh, Father Ben, why don't we just offer a blessing? In Espanol, no? Señor. El Señor esté con ustedes. Y con tu espíritu. Que la bendición de Dios, Padre, Hijo, Espíritu Santo, descienda sobre ustedes y permanezca para siempre. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas, everybody. Feliz, Feliz Navidad. Navidad. Merry Christmas.